We had a very active stretch of weather here these past couple of days, and that will continue for both today and into tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us here on AccuWeather Weekend, everyone. I'm meteorologist Damian Lotus, and even as we head into this afternoon, I will be tracking some early morning shower chances that will turn possibly into severe weather as we head into this afternoon. So here's the broad view here of our radar, starting to see some showers pushing into the Oklahoma and Texas panhandles. That is going to kickstart some widespread rainfall here as we head into this evening. There's also a couple of showers stretching from the Great Lakes all the way down towards Missouri and some lingering rainfall there across the East Coast. But overall, we're going to be watching that I-70 corridor between Denver and St. Louis here as we head throughout this afternoon and as we head into this evening. Temperature wise, we're going to see some pretty moderate conditions, some cool air being pulled into the northern Rockies. Billings only getting up to 58 degrees today. Now for Wichita and pretty much the entire I-40 corridor in the southern plains south, we'll see record-breaking temperatures possible here for today. It's going to be a hot one. Today's the official last day of summertime and it will look and feel like it here. Look at Chicago. 92 degrees here for this afternoon, but our top stories today, we will see severe storms and flooding rainfall possible today and tomorrow. Up to seven inches of flooding rainfall are forecasted across the central plains over the next 48 hours. Meanwhile, half a foot of snow or more is expected across the Colorado Rockies as we head into tonight. And after that, all eyes will be on the tropics as we are monitoring the development of a potentially strong hurricane forming as we head into next week. So let's go and get you ready for the latest here. We'll start you off with a look at that potential hurricane development as we head into next week. Here's the area we are watching here across the Caribbean. We have a couple of isolated thunderstorms popping down here, and it's going to be one of these thunderstorms that gets caught up by the jet stream and steered to the northwest. Once it moves into the Gulf, that's when we're going to see that explosive and dangerous development as we head into next week. So overall, the jet stream is going to be the primary thing we're watching out for as far as the steering mechanism heading into next week. Because in this area right here, highlighted in red, we have the necessary ingredients for explosive development, including very warm water, abundant moisture, and low wind shear. So whatever storm forms down here is going to quickly intensify here as we head throughout the weekend and early next week. So for our AccuWeather development potential, this area right here highlighted between the 24th and the 26th is in the red, which is at the tip top of our scale. So any storm that pushes in here will rapidly intensify. So we know we are going to see a storm develop, but what's going to happen to that storm once it does develop? Well, looking at climatology, any storms that form in this area, these are the tracks that they have taken here over the past 50 years. And you can see they're kind of all over the place, but when you break them down statistically, the highest likelihood of storm path will be here into the central Gulf Coast between Louisiana over towards the Florida Panhandle. So as of right now, that's where it looks like the highest likelihood of development and the path will be. But it all depends on the jet stream. The jet stream is what can either block or steer these tropical storms and hurricanes this time of year. So depending on how deep the jet stream dips, that's what's going to determine the overall path that this storm is going to take. If it takes a deeper path, or a deeper dip, I guess, that what's going to happen is that the uh, tropical storm or hurricane is going to take more of a eastward lead track, but if it starts to shallow up just a little bit, it's going to allow more time to develop across that warm Gulf water, and then that's what's going to happen as far as pushing into central parts of Louisiana and the Florida coast. So this is what we're going to be watching out for very carefully here as we head throughout the next couple of days and as we head into next week. So we're going to go from the tropics. We're going to show you a really interesting video that we got sent in. This is of a double rainbow in Philly. So in addition to the tropical threat that we're going to be watching very closely as we head into next week, there's also going to be a rainfall flooding and severe weather threat here as we head into this afternoon and this evening. So here's the overall setup of what I'm tracking here for your Saturday. This dip in the jet stream, that's going to pull in some cooler air across the northern Rockies, but it's also going to kickstart a wide area of showers, thunderstorms, and severe weather chances here as we head throughout your Saturday. In fact, here's your updated AccuWeather storm zone here for severe weather this afternoon. Pretty much any thunderstorms that form from central Minnesota all the way down to northern Kansas will be capable of producing Small hail, strong winds, heavy rainfall, and even a low-end tornado threat. Our AccuWeather local storm max for localized winds up to 80 miles an hour. But it does look like that flooding potential is going to be the main risk here as we head throughout this evening and into tonight. Pretty much the corridor of I-70 between Denver and St. Louis, we're going to see widespread reports of 2 to 4 inches of total rainfall. In fact, our AccuWeather local storm max seven inches of total rainfall here as we head throughout today, tonight, and tomorrow. And whenever you look at our projected rainfall, you can see that bullseye 
is pretty much the Kansas City metro. So if we are expected to see any of those six or seven inch rainfall totals, it does look like it's going to be unfortunately around the Kansas Metro. So let's go ahead and break this down with our future track radar. As we head into this afternoon, I'm stopping the clock at 6 p.m. This is local time. You'll see heavy rainfall developing across central Kansas and even some severe thunderstorms possible for the Oklahoma and Texas panhandles. And yes, as you look across the Rockies, this blue you're seeing here on the map, that is snowfall developing across the uh, central Rockies there just to the west of Denver. So Aspen, looks like we're going to see some pretty good snowfall chances here as we head throughout this afternoon and as we head into this evening. But as we head into the overnight hours, I'm stopping the clock at midnight, Saturday night, Sunday morning, widespread flooding rainfall across a majority of central Kansas into central parts of Missouri. And then as we head into early Sunday morning, 6 a.m., widespread flooding rainfall continuing here for your early Sunday. But as we head into Sunday afternoon, that wall of water is going to slowly lift its way to the north into central parts of Nebraska. So we will be watching out for that flooding rainfall threat here as we head throughout this afternoon, this evening, and tonight. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and take a live look right now at Kansas City. It's now to take a look at the other weather stories that Melissa and I are tracking as we head throughout the weekend. And you know, depending on where you are in the Northeast, it depends on if you're going to see that sunshine or if you're going to get a little more rain, Damien. Yes, there will be more rain chances in the forecast for this evening, which we definitely need because some areas like Boston have seen the driest start ever for September, right? But as we head into this afternoon, in addition to rainfall, there will also be a severe weather threat here for this afternoon. So here's the updated AccuWeather storm zone here for us, Melissa. So from western PA all the way down into Virginia, we will see a risk of severe weather. The biggest threats here will be that risk for a little bit of hail trying to mix in, but mostly just the heavy rainfall on top of dry ground that could lead to some challenges with that. And of course, gusty winds can take down tree limbs or uh, create some problems on the roadways. That's right. Our AccuWeather local storm max is 70 miles an hour. So the setup here for today, we will see those shower and thunderstorms extending from the Great Lakes all the way down into West Virginia, which Western West Virginia has been under an exceptional drought. So we will take every drop of rainfall we can get. Yeah, that's going to be some good news there. And hey, you talked about a dry start for Boston. We have, that of course, changed. <laughs> have yes. changed that for the month of September. So adding some rain in there. And uh, you can see why we just got that low hanging off the coast. And it's just bringing in all that moisture, which once again is a good thing here for Massachusetts because they definitely need the rainfall. So projected rainfall as we head throughout the rest of the weekend, really good rain for central into eastern PA all the way down the east coast. So we are starting to fill in this map which we definitely need as much rainfall as we can get. Yeah, very beneficial moisture there. All right, let's talk about the southeastern U.S. because it's not only a little bit drier, but it's warmer and brighter for us, too. I don't think many in the southeast want the orange and red colors on the map, but you're just going to have to accept it uh, with some more sunshine out there for most. Yes, that's right. It is the last day of summertime. It is going to look and feel like it. We'll even see some areas, Jackson, Mississippi, Little Rock, in the upper 90s here for Saturday afternoon. Yeah, pretty toasty there. Thunderstorms will keep places like Tampa and Miami a little more closer to the lower 90s and uh, keep those temperatures a bit more moderate. But let's head into Sunday because guess what? Tomorrow, more of the same for us. The exception might be Raleigh, who warms up a bit but adds those showers and thunderstorms back to the forecast. Yes, we'll see some summer like heat and some spring like thunderstorms here, but overall, it's going to be a pretty nice day for your Sunday. Yeah, pretty uh, decent day across the southeast. And let's talk about some snow because uh, I know there's winter lovers out there and this is the time of year where you start thinking about That's it. That's right because today is the last day of summer and in keeping with that obviously of course the Rockies are going to see some snowfall here for this weekend. So here's the latest setup here our snowfall projection. So we are forecasting that any areas above 11,000 feet could see over six inches of total snowfall here for the weekend. So overall you can see that corridor between Edwards, Georgetown and Denver we're there along the I-70 highway. That's where we're going to see the heaviest snowfall, especially areas south. So Aspen, going to get some great chances of snowfall, accumulating snowfall. Here's the latest timeline. So as we head throughout Saturday afternoon, midday to late afternoon, whenever you start to see blue here mixed in with the rainfall, that's whenever we start to see that transition from rain to snow. So some heavy snow possible here as we head throughout this afternoon and this evening. And it's even going to stick around here as we head into the overnight hours. And of course, that's going to make some tricky travel out there. 
That's right, and as we head into this afternoon, there will be some travel disruptions, but as of right now here, as we head into your early Saturday afternoon, for the most part, we are green across the map. There's still some early morning fog developing across the West Coast. That is causing some minor delays in San Francisco, but other than that, no real major delays here, at least for this early afternoon. But later this afternoon, as those storms really get going, we will start to see some delays possible for both Minneapolis and Denver. And then as we head into tomorrow, more delays because of more widespread showers showers and thunderstorms, you can download our AccuWeather app to keep up to date with the latest. Stay tuned.